Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we are going to conquer this nice, interesting math word problem. Now, a little bit of a uh, kind of a clue here. You'll need to use a little bit of algebra, but not too complicated of algebra. So definitely don't be scared of this problem. And uh, again, there's, no, there's not just one way to solve a math problem. So maybe you can even reason through this thing in a different way and still get the answer. But let's go ahead and read the problem. It says the ratio of an integer and two less than that integer is two thirds. Find the integer. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second. And then we're going to walk through the solution step by step and explain these words here, what a ratio is and what an integer is, just in case you forgot. Obviously, you need to know what both of these words mean in order to solve this problem. Uh, also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it uh, in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm gonna explain what these words ratio and integers mean in just one second, but let's go ahead and uh, answer the question. And of course, the question is find the integer in question. So what is the answer? The answer is negative four. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you know a thing or two about ratios and integers. They'll be super impressed with that information. Now let's go ahead and get into the problem. And before I even show you the kind of the setup here, let's go ahead and just discuss the vocabulary, the terminology in this problem. Now, before I even do that, let's just make sure we understand the basics of solving a math word problem. So how do you solve a math word problem? Well, there's all different sorts of ways. There's not any one, uh, any one particular formula you always follow with the exception of this. You need to read the question at least three times. So read the question uh, just to get your bearings one time, just to get a sense of what's going on. And then the second time you read the question, try to pull in some more details, try to get a better sense of the specifics and you know, kind of build the picture. Then the third time, now at a minimum, you wanna read this thing uh, three times, but the last time you read a problem, you really need to make sure you understand the question. So here, we wanna find the integer. So we have the ratio of an integer and two less than that integer is two thirds. Find the integer. So now let's go ahead and talk about these words here, ratio, and integer, okay? Well, a ratio is nothing more than a fraction. Now, there is some specific uh, kind of um, uh, other things that we could talk about in terms of ratios. As a matter of fact, let's just talk about it right now, real, real fast. That way you can walk away with not only knowing how to solve this problem, but just some more, you know, uh, really important information in terms of mathematics. So when you study ratios, you often study something called rates and proportions, okay? So rates, ratios, and proportions, pretty common classic type of chapter or section or unit in all sorts of algebra books. So what are rates and ratios? Well, rates and ratios are nothing more than fractions, okay? These are fractions. So let's just say I have uh, 60 over uh, one, okay? This right here can be described as a uh, a rate or a ratio. Now, what is the difference between a rate or a ratio? It all comes down to units of measure. So if I go 60 miles per one hour, okay, if I look at the units of measure here, this is time, this is distance, two different, completely different units of measure, we would classify this thing as a rate, okay? So a rate is a fraction where the numerator and denominator are, are comparing two different units of measure. Now, a ratio, as you might guess, is comparing the same uh, units of measure, the same concept. So if I write like one to 20, this could be like, let's say teacher-student ratio. Now you might be saying, hey, Mr. U2 Math Man, you're comparing two different things here. No, 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 I'm not. What we're doing here is we're counting people. Okay, one teacher and 20 students. This is one person and this is 20 um, uh, students here. We are 
you know, we're talking about human beings, right? Even though some of you might uh, question whether teachers, math teachers are actually human beings. Yes, we're part of the human race as well. Anyways, hopefully, you know, you understand the concept here. So uh, student or uh, teacher student uh, student teacher ratio, that's how the way we would say it, like one to 20 means that for every 20 students, there'll be one teacher. This is kind of common uh, way to uh, hear this word ratio. There's so many ratio type of things you could do. But here's the main thing that I want you to know. When you use the word ratio, you oftentimes use the word two. OK, one to 20. So if you hear that word two, it's almost kind of a giveaway that, oh, you're talking about a ratio and then a rate to use that word per okay like 60 miles per one hour and that per is the fraction bar and that two here is the fraction bar so rates and ratios again are fractions uh, but they do you know you have to understand more than just uh, you, you know you really need to understand all these details okay it's this stuff is important everything that I do on my YouTube channel I try to you know, emphasize stuff that you do need to know. Now let's go ahead real, real fast and talk about what a proportion is. So I said that, you know, uh, ratios, rates, and proportions are all kind of lumped together effectively. So these two are uh, fractions. What is a proportion? A proportion is nothing more than two equal fractions. So for example, if I have one half, I'm thinking, uh, what's a fraction that's equal to one half? How about like say three over six? You can have all sorts of fractions, five over 10, doesn't make a difference. Pick your fraction. But here is the main thing you need to remember about proportions, okay? When you have a proportion, i.e. two equal uh, fractions or two equal ratios or rates, okay? What holds true is what we call the cross product. Because if you multiply diagonally like so, one times six, that's gonna be equal to two times three. Okay, we could see that here. Six is equal to two times three, which is six. So the cross product is true. There's other fancy uh, words, uh, um, uh, descriptions that we could talk about proportions. That there's things called the means and the extremes, and there's even other additional proportion properties. But let me just tell you right now, if you remember the cross product, you'll be good to go. All right, so that's a quick power lesson on ratio rates and proportions. So now that we understand what a ratio is, let's make sure we understand what an integer is, okay? So real, real fast here. Now I'm bringing it up because a lot of you, I can, I can tell you right now, if I give you a pop quiz, you wouldn't be able to exactly tell me what an integer is real fast. So on the set of real numbers, okay, a number line, one, two, three, et cetera. These numbers here are what? Well, we call these, starting with one, the natural numbers or the counting numbers. It's like, hey, when you look out in a real world and you're looking at cars, do you, you know, you're gonna see one car or two cars or three cars. These are naturally occurring numbers or numbers we count with, right? So when we're like a little kid, we're you know using our fingers to count with. So these are the counting numbers or the natural numbers. Now, when we add in zero, all right, now we have the whole numbers. Now, if I take these numbers here and I uh, have the negative of these numbers, okay, the negative of the whole numbers like so, these guys right here is the integers, okay? So integers are numbers like this, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, et cetera. And then we can continue to build up the subsets of the real number set. Uh, like rational numbers and irrational numbers. All this stuff you should know very, very well if you're taking any sort of algebra course. Now, a lot of you are saying, I don't need to know all that stuff, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Just tell me how to do the problem. I just want to know how to get the answer right on a test or quiz. Well, listen, if you don't understand this stuff, then you're taking shortcuts. All right, so with all that being said, it's important that you, now you understand what a ratio is and integer is. Let's go ahead and figure this out. All right, so we need to find this integer. So we're trying to find a number, okay? Well, let's go ahead and use a variable to represent that number. So let's let n represent this integer, okay? Now, this is another kind of tricky part of this problem. So it says the ratio of an integer and two less than that integer. So two less than that integer, what does that mean? Well, you gotta be very careful here. This is two less, minus two. We're gonna take away two from that integer. So here's the integer. If we take away two, this is two less than that integer. 
And when you're um, kind of constructing expressions with variables that involve sums and differences like this, get in the habit of putting parentheses around it. Okay, it will save you a lot of frustration later on when we get into the problem uh, uh, solving kind of uh, calculations here. Okay, so really, really important. N minus two is uh, two less than the uh, than the integer if the integer is n. Okay, so now we know that a ratio is a fraction. So what we have to do is translate this sentence. And here, we have to start using the rest of the information in this problem. Okay, so we know what a ratio is. We're going to be constructing a fraction. We know what an integer is. We know what two less than that integer uh, is conceptually. Is is what? Is is always the equal symbol Okay, in algebra, we're going to translate this verbal uh, sentence into an algebraic equation. Uh, so this is going to be is two thirds. So find the integer we're going to be solving for n. Okay, so hopefully you see that. Now let's go ahead and build our lovely equation. All right, so the ratio, the ratio, I'm thinking what? Oh, I'm thinking fractions. Fractions of what? Well, of an integer and two less than that integer. Okay, so this right here is the ratio, okay, of an integer and two less than that integer. Okay, so this is the ratio of an integer and two less than integer is two thirds. Okay, and I know my answer n is going to be some sort of uh, integer value, right? So if I come up with a decimal or something like that, or like an irrational number or square root, then I know that I didn't do this thing correctly. Okay, so finally, finally, we're looking at what? Well, what we're looking at here is uh, actually a proportion. This fraction is equal to this fraction, okay? One fraction equal to another fraction is a proportion. Of course, you can look at this and be like, well, this is just an algebraic equation. Yes, that's true. But you can also think of this as a proportion and use the cross product. And that is exactly what we're going to do to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So we're going to go uh, crosswise because we do have a proportion here. So this, this is going to be, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at right here. So it's going to be n times 3 or 3 times n. So we'll write that on this side. And then 2 times this expression, n minus 2. So 2 times, whoops, uh, 2 times this. Now, if I didn't have these parentheses here, uh, you would get, uh, this is a, a place where a lot of students make mistakes. Okay, all these little things that I'm telling you aren't kind of obvious. Now, you know, I'm putting a parentheses in, so you're like, oh yeah, I understand what's going on. But a lot of students wouldn't have these parentheses. So imagine if you didn't have that, you would be like, oh, that's 2 times uh, n minus 2. And then what happens is a lot of students just go 2n minus 2. Okay, they're going to, of course, get that wrong because we have to use the distributor property. We have to take that 2 and distribute to both n and this minus 2. So that's going to give us 2n minus 4. All right, so finally, finally, we have 3n is equal to 2n, uh, 2n minus 4. So how do I solve this equation? Easy, we're just going to go ahead and subtract 2n from both sides of the equation, and we get n is equal to negative 4. Okay, so uh, if you understand everything I talked about uh, in this particular problem, then that's excellent, okay? If this was like a little bit too much of like, you know, overwhelmed, you're like, oh my goodness, I forgot what this is, I don't know what that is. Well, listen, just take a deep breath. What you need to do is review some algebra. So I'll probably suggest that you check out maybe like my Algebra 1 course or maybe my pre-algebra course, but these are definitely type of problems that you will encounter in mathematics. Really, really important that you understand what a ratio is, a rate is, a proportion is, an integer is. All this is like good stuff, okay? And everything here you can definitely learn. So if you're confused, don't worry about it. Check out my uh, various courses and all. also I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with this as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.